see uh, all the board members are here, so I'd like to uh, call the meeting to order, please. And I'm pulling up the uh, agenda uh, on my computer here. Okay. Um, there are no meeting minutes uh, to address. Um, there were vendor and payroll warrants that were sent out earlier. Um, are there any uh, comments or uh, concerns about the vendor payroll warrants? No. Fred, nothing no. to you? Looks okay. Okay. All right. Um, item three is public comment. This is where we can listen to comments from the public related to items not listed on the agenda. Um, and I see with the muted microphone we have one member of the public here. Um, but maybe he will be, uh, maybe he'll be back later. Uh, having no public comment then, uh, we uh, had a meeting the other day about the COVID-19 state of emergency. That's the, the fourth item on the agenda here. <coughs> I think we put that on um, because we didn't know we were going to have the emergency meeting and also it might be a good chance for us to update anything if there have been changes since yesterday. So um, maybe let's just ask Brian, have there been any changes since yesterday or things we decided on that are working well, not working well in the first 24 hours of, of using that? Um, um, I, I think everything's good so far. Um, I mean, just sort of statewide, the one thing that's changed is that schools are now closed through May 4th. Um, okay. So we'll con that'll continue to be um, something we need to keep an eye on. I, that was, in, that was uh, in order issued by the governor this afternoon. Um, and I'm not sure we'll, we'll have to just, like we have for the past two weeks, keep adapting to what the what the changes are. Um, yeah, I, one of the questions I have is, will we continue to provide, you know, lunches and breakfast for students? I, I don't know the answer to that question at this point, but that's okay. the question that's out there. Um, I mean, so my thought was in, for this section, if, if the board's so inclined, I'll just give a brief summary of, of what we've done so far, because really the last three of these have been in emergency meetings and um, some of the earlier ones were not, um, well, they definitely weren't televised and we didn't have them on Zoom. So um, I'm just gonna run, just give a brief rundown of what the, the boards decided in the past the week. Um, that sounds like a good idea. Okay. So the last regular meeting of the board was March 11th, um, 2020. And we had no idea what fun we'd be in for um, with all these meetings. Um, sarcastically, of course. Um, so since March 11th, the select board has met three times in emergency session, and all of these due to the, the COVID-19 um, outbreak that's happening. Um, on March 13th, this was a, um, March 13th was a Friday, um, the board met and declared a local state of emergency in the town of Waitley due to the COVID-19 um, outbreak. Um, the board next met in emergency session on March 16th, 2020, so that was the following Monday, uh, and the board issued an emergency order restricting the access of the general public to all town buildings. That was done in an effort to keep um, town employees safe by limiting the contact with the general public. Um, and then the board met yesterday, again in the emergency session on March 24th, to respond to Governor Baker's order of uh, the previous day that closed all non-essential businesses in the Commonwealth, um, and we needed to talk about what's essential and what's not essential in terms of our operations, which we did. And I think the board uh, took three actions at that meeting, the meeting of March 24th. Um, the board issued a directive that all town employees shall limit work from town buildings, except when necessary to conduct essential businesses or essential functions. At all other times, employees are expected to work remotely from home where possible. And if working remotely is not possible to remain on call to respond if needed um, to carry out essential activities. 
Um, this order was effective immediately and will be reviewed at the next select board meeting on April 8th. The second action the board took was the board voted to continue paying employees a regular base pay at least until April 8th for those who could not work or or who were working less hours from home during the duration of the directive. And the third action was the board voted to request permission from the Department of Local Services to deficit spend the, ta uh, the town's emergency management account and other accounts as needed. Um, so that's a quick summary of, of the actions the board's taken um, since March 11th. Um, so really, I mean, in terms of operations, um, Town offices, so that's assessors, town administrator, town clerk, treasury collector, um, accountant, that building's closed. Um, we've worked out a schedule internally where for those who need to be there, we're trying to rotate days um, when people need to come in for the just to conduct those essential functions. Um, obviously, town hall, we don't have staff there, that's closed. Um, highway garage is closed with our staff on call. Library's closed. Fire departments, emergency services only. Police departments, emergency services only. Um, if you have a special need to, not emergency special need for the police department, we ask that, that you would call the station. Um, water department, they're obviously carrying out their essential functions of keeping the water safe. Um, all other boards and committees um, are not planning on meeting as far as I know, unless there's essential matters to be addressed and we have um, we have systems in place now where um, people, those boards or committees could meet remotely um, through this Zoom service, actually. Um, and then on the website, we have a couple, uh, a couple of items posted under the news section I think people would be interested in. One talks about the transfer station, which is going to remain open um, with special protocols in place. And the idea there is that there'd be really no um, personal contact. We understand there's a need for people to buy stickers or bags, um, but we ask people to just use the, use the transfer station and keep moving on. Um, there's information about meals for seniors that are provided through the, um, through the South County Senior Center, and there is a delivery option available. Um, and that's, that, I think that's through a partnership between Frontier and South County EMS. Um, I can, give you an update on, I can give you an update on that, Brian. Um, yep. A robocall went out uh, to all Waitley uh, residents yesterday. Um, if you live in Waitley, you should have received that. Uh, and the senior center saw a, a, a pretty big uptick in calls into the center, uh, reserving lunches, uh, and also uh, a, a few, not, not a great number, but that's understandable, people who would like uh, meals, to, the, the lunch delivered to their home. Yep. Um, so the robocall seems to have been effective in encouraging people to stay home and stay healthy and safe. Um, and we are organizing now for, for SCEMS, uh, mostly SCEMS, uh, and senior center staff to deliver uh, the lunches to the front doors. They will not go into the house. They will leave the lunch on the front porch or the side porch, wherever it is. Um, so it seems to be, to have been effective and, and there are more, there are more calls coming in today for the same thing. Also through the generosity of Frontier, Frontier is going to start dropping off, um, you know, a light breakfast, like a muffin to the senior center. Um, so those, those seniors who have requested to p either pick up lunch or have it delivered, uh, lunch will now include uh, sort of a, a muffin or light lunch. And I'm not sure what that exactly entails for the next morning for those same seniors. Yep. Okay. That sounds good. And then the last thing, the last one that's on the website that's relevant is that um, there's also information about uh, meals for students from the elementary school. Um, so that's really an update as to as to where we are, um, where we've been, I guess. Um, okay, so if you have any um, other uh, questions or comments, John, Fred? Oh. Well, okay. I, I have a, an observation, and I guess I shared it with Brian earlier today that uh, 
I see some people coming to the town office, not going for a meeting, just coming in to do, I don't know what you call it, maybe a routine business or checking mail or even socializing with people who are there. And some of these people are on our list of essential employees that we identified yesterday. Uh, I, I think some stronger language maybe needs to be on our website there. This is not mean, this is not what we mean by essential employees still coming to the town offices. Uh, I don't know how some of these employees, I guess, do come because they have files there and they, knew, they do business. They need to talk to the town clerk uh, or a treasurer, but others should not be coming at all for any reason. Even to talk to Brian, I, I, would, I would guess, uh, they should be calling first or calling to call, talk to Brian or, or anybody else there. So I don't know whether something more you know, basic or to the point needs to be on our website. Don't come unless there's essential meeting as determined by Brian and chair of select board, period. Yeah, I thought that was pretty clear already. But no, I guess not. No, and especially when we identify essential employees, what does that mean? You know, police department's got two plus nine part-time. Does that mean any of them can come to the office? No, as, again, essential, essential responsibilities are an essential responsibility as it pertains to your job. If you don't need to come to the office, don't come to the office. Right. right. Well, I, then maybe that should go through department heads so that they can make it a little more clear to the uh, to the various employees. Um, like I, I don't know from watching someone walk in the building whether they're going in to socialize or to do some essential business, um, but there's I think it would be not very difficult to ask um, supervisors to just check in with their employees and uh, and let them know we have a concern that uh, uh, if you're just coming to, to talk, that can be done by phone right. or something like that um, to, to really kind of take it seriously. So I, I don't, I'm not sure that we can make the language any stronger, but I think we can make the message clearer to employees. If that, does that seem like a, a reasonable option? Yes. At least a, a reasonable next step. I think it is, unless Brian has some other Coming, no. I think the most effective thing to do would be to send an email that just, I mean, our what, what we talked in the, in the meeting was that's a two and a half, well, I don't know, two, two or three page document, but just an email that says, please don't come into the buildings unless you have, unless there's, I don't know what, what exact language would be, but I think a, a very to the point email is probably more effective than burying the language in a, two or three page document. So yeah, I'm, I'm willing to send that out. Are the okay. are the door office doors locked? Yeah. Uh, so how are they coming into chat? Um, it depends. So, I mean, some of them have keys. Um, most of the department heads have keys to the office. To the, to the town office building. I have, a, I have a key to the town office building, but if I'm in the town yeah. office building, unless I have a purpose, I'm wasting people's time and getting in the way. And that's how people should feel that what they're doing is, is taking place. They're wasting other people's time or their own and getting in the way. Right. The, the ones and, I, and, I, and I, don't, I don't mean to sound harsh about that, but that's just the reality. People are very busy. Right. The, the yeah. ones that get in, Jonathan, what I, I've... I guess observed and, and and actually was told that the the staff that's there goes and opens the door for them and lets them in. Mm. Well, you know, I, I'm not gonna, uh, you know, I, it's for Brian's right for department heads or whom whoever said that. So this is our first day and it's something yeah. new. So I think um, if Brian's willing to make that, uh, you know, just sort of kind of a reminder and an email clarifying things, that might be the best next best step and then we'll see if it continues to be a problem yeah 
that sound like a reasonable way to move forward? I don't think we need to take a vote on that. Oh, okay, go ahead. Okay. All right, great, thank you, Fred. Okay. Um, so there are, uh, a, 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 there's one item of new business um, to appoint uh, Rick Adam Check to, as the Inspector of Animals for the Town of Waitley. I would hear a motion on that. Motion. Second. Okay. Since we're uh, by remote, we need to do a, a voice, uh, sorry, a, um, uh, a roll call vote. So all those in favor, John? Yep. Fred? Yes. Joy? Yep. Okay. Uh, th thank you, Rick, for being willing to be our uh, inspector of animals. Uh, last item is town administrator update. So I'll turn it over to Brian. Yeah. Um, it, so there's a lot of stuff in flux. So that's probably no surprise. Um, a lot of the, we had two big planning projects two planning projects going on. One was the hazard mitigation planning and one was the MVP planning, which are similar. Um, both of those require in-person meeting. Those, I'm pretty certain those contracts are gonna get extended and we're just gonna push everything out with that, like a lot of stuff. Um, there's new proposed legislation every day for addressing a whole host of issues. Town meeting elections, what happens when if it's July 1st and we haven't had, um, if we haven't had our town meeting, if we don't have a budget yet, um, all this stuff is coming fast and furious. Um, but I think um, there's nothing fortunate about this, but the timing of, of it not being, let's say June, the end of June or something, it, it gives us, it gives the, le um, the legislature and the governor time to work a lot of these things out um, before we hit the new fiscal year. Um, the only other one that I have some, some concerns on is the complete street sidewalk project, um, that has not gone out to bid yet. Um, contract for that is ends June 30th. I fully expect that we would get an extension on that. Um, so that's sort of one that's been hanging out there. Um, but it's something it would be difficult to put out to bid right now because it requires uh, a bid conference. And I don't know that we've had any guidance in terms of public bid openings and how that would work. Um, and um, so we're kind of just pushing that down the road a little bit. Green community grants, um, that's been extended. There's a culvert grant we were gonna apply for for Christian Lane um, by routes five and 10, that's been extended. Um, there's just a whole lot more that we don't know than we know at this point, but um, I think we'll just try to continue to do what we're doing and adapt to the changes that happen. But um, in terms of the Williamsburg Road Bridge, um, we submitted a request to MassDOT. I had a conversation with, um, with MassDOT yesterday and our engineer. Um, District two is willing to support um, a request in the amount of um, around $272,000, which is almost equal to the uh, additional construction costs. They're willing, to, they're willing to support it and put that forward to Boston. Um, so wow. obviously there's no promises. They made that pretty clear um, as they don't control the money, but I, I suspect they have a pretty good idea of what's available and what's not. Um, so we'll wait to hear on that. I need to send them a revised letter, a revised request letter. Um, our original letter included some, some additional engineering costs that Ty and Bond had incurred, um, but they didn't want to, or they weren't willing to include those in the request. So um, that would be a, I don't like this term, but that would be a game change. That would be extremely helpful if they were, if we could get that additional money, because it would, it would right. cover, it would cover everything and some more. So um, Keith and I still need to look at the numbers, but um, it means our chapter 90 funds would take 
um, a much smaller, um, it's not the right word, but we'd have to use a much smaller amount of chapter 90 funds. Would we have to use any? Um, Doesn't seem like it'd be much at all. It's gonna depend on, I think, um, so time bond, so the so time bond the engineer, they did some they did some additional work, um, so I think um, Keith needs to reach out to um, their engineer to see sort of what that number is because I don't know exactly what it is. He may have it, um, but it should be minimal for Chapter ninety, I would think. Were they requested to do the additional work? Um, yeah, they needed to do it. Okay. Um, oh, one update that I had, and I emailed a couple of people, it looks like um, charging stations at the park and ride at exit 24 are going to be going in. Um, Mass DOT and Eversource have to do final agreement on um, host agreement. We have nothing to do with it. Uh, and uh, they've already picked a vendor to do the work. So, and that kind you know, the scope of work has to be fleshed out. So, you know, I'm not saying it's going to be tomorrow, right. um, but it's going to happen, I think. Right. These, these going to be the high speed chargers or? I don't know. I don't know what they look, what, 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 uh, what uh, capacity they're going to have. I assume so, but I, I wouldn't want to promise that, Fred. But not something's better than nothing. Right. Thanks, James. Uh, somebody else trying to connect to the meeting, but we're just about done, I think. <coughs> um, I've got uh, uh, any more town administrator updates? Or you were all done there, Brian? Um, I, I think that's about it. It's been a whirlwind. <laughs> it's been a whirlwind two weeks. So if I'm forgetting something, I'll, we'll get it on April 8th. Okay. Uh, yeah, so our next uh, scheduled meeting anyway will be April 8th uh, and then April 29th. Um, so I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Uh, second. All in favor? John? Yep. Uh, Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yep.